Simon Custom Works, Bondo! Salmon Custom Works, we're getting right in, right in, and I mean right in, on the 60s truck. Gonna make that Continental kit open, close, maybe even have a panel gap, just make the whole mechanism work. That's all gonna happen now. This like Continental kit on the back. Now, we've got the shape here, and yeah, I'm happy, there's a lot of rough filler around and stuff, but what I don't wanna do, I'm gonna go too far here. Because what I'm going to do is, I'll end up making all this nice and in about 10 minutes from when I'm talking now, I'm going to chop it all off. Because I've got to make this open. It can't be here, it has to move because all of this comes out and forms that ramp. So I need to swing this over to here to get it out of the way. So, it's already on a pivot and we mounted that arm that was on, I think it, if you look under the past, that's where it was. So I did that, and now all I've got to do is cut out, and I've got to sketch out of some lines, I'm thinking, but you know what? I'm not that bothered. To think that you're just going to run around this with the, you know, two discs in the angle grinder, get a panel gap, it's going to open, it's going to be right, dreaming. This is going to end up with big gaps, things that need to, you know, things that need to just slide in and shut right. We will find that out after, I'll just cut the gap bigger, and then glass in the panel gap so that everything fits lovely when it opens and closes. But for now, and there is no easy, and certainly no dust-free way around sorting this out. I'm just gonna have to get the angle grinder. I said I was gonna use double disc there, but I'm gonna use like a 1.5 mil grinding disc. I'm gonna cut all this out, and I'm gonna cut and cut and cut until this swings open. And then it's gonna just be a load of mess and then we'll put it all back together. And by the end of the day, hopefully, <laughs> it should be all right. I don't know. Let's get the grinder and let's make a literally a biblical amount of dust. So just before we get the angle grinder out, this is where I'm gonna cut. So I'm gonna bring a cut line from there, around here, and then I'm gonna go straight down here through the bumper. And hopefully this should this should flap round. On the other side, it's all a little bit simpler. I'm just gonna come from here. Don't forget this side isn't trimmed, so it's not quite as neat as that side. I'm gonna come down here, around, and out of there. No, I really am getting the grinder, and I am gonna do it. So we've cut everything out here. We've cut all around here, as I said I was gonna. And then, I've cut all around here. Now, I was trying to V this bumper out. There is no way, there is no way that that's ever gonna work. So all I've got now is like this bit of bumper left. The rest of the bumper's in the bin. <laughs> so I'll make a whole new piece of bumper. But it's just never gonna work. And I was cutting the V, hoping that we would be, it'd open and swing away from it, but really it's not gonna happen. 
So now what I'm going to do is glass this bumper back together. Once this bumper's back together, hopefully this will swing under. My, my main problem here is that uh, obviously, we look under here, here is the pivot, which is, I don't know, stub axle off a Corsa or something. Um, here's, here's the pivot. So as this comes under, it's got to either cut around that or it's got to avoid that. I've no idea how this is going to pan out. Uh, it, yeah, I don't know. What I'm going to do though, I'm going to get this on there in position and then actuate it and just see, you know, what goes on. And to get this in position, all I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna hammer some bits of wood into this foam. I'm gonna glue that on there. I'm just gonna bondo it all together and then try all this out. I'm not sure it's gonna clear that. I'm worried this is all gonna end up in the bin. So what I'm gonna do is I'll bodge this up, actuate it a couple of times, see how close we are to this pivot point. Then I'll take it from there, I think. Get that on, swing it in, let's see what happens. Okay then, so for the first time today, a bit of luck I think. Basically I've, I, I've bondo these on, and to get this in here, it's all very wobbly and flimsy at the minute. And this does, it, 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 it does swing under. I've had to cut a lot out here. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there. I have to make something to sort of hide the gap so you don't realize that that bit moves. But all of this bit has worked. This swings under, doesn't catch the pivot. This all clears, this tucks nicely. It opens fully out. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna fill this with foam. I'm gonna go and have some lunch, and when I come back, the foam will be set, and I can re-sculpt this, and then start glassing in and making this all a bit more solid than it is, because it really is. This whole bumper is super flimsy at the minute, but then again, it's just held together with Bondo and a couple of bits of wood. So we'll get that done. Just the foam will make it better for working on it this afternoon. And then we can look at how we're going to make that so the bumper just tucks behind nicely. I just get the motion of this and how it sort of unwraps itself so it looks right before we start on any sort of finishing. Okay, so we put that foam on, but didn't really dry. Like I say, you've really got to leave it overnight, but that's over there. So we're doing some other stuff. So I'm going to try and make this a bit more rigid. Have a look at this Continental kit. So then, here's the mould. And uh, what I've done, I've cleaned out all the, um, all the polystyrene and the plaster and stuff like that. Got all of that taken out. And what I did that with, I did it with the angle grinder with the wire wheel in it, because that really does, um, it just, wow, it gets rid of it really quick. Um, fills the room with uh, dust and crap, but it is really quick. So, what I'm hoping to do here is add this bar across here. I'm gonna weld that in just here, and then what I'm gonna do is glass the back of this, just to stiffen the whole thing up, because it really is floppy, and to be honest, there's, there's no point doing any more bodywork around it until we know this is this is true and it's solid and it moves in and out in the same place every time. I weld this in, glass it up, and then we can tr start to try and make this thing actually fit.
Okay, so all in there is our fiberglass. And it's about dry, so I think we can move on. But this is definitely gonna stop this bit flapping in. Just gonna make, triangulate the whole thing and make it a lot more sort of rigid. Love going over the inside of fiberglass, just making it thicker and thicker and thicker, stronger and more immortal than ever. Let's see if this shuts, then let's see what we've got to do to this bumper and what we've got to do to make all this fit to a neat panel gap when it's done. Don't forget in a minute, all we're doing is fiberglassing and stuff like that, just trying to get the shape and the motion all to work. And it's looking pretty good. Still got this piece of foam, it won't dry, do my head in. But hopefully I'll be able to um, grind that out, I'm gonna glass over it, make this more rigid. Essentially, we've sort of, we've sort of got it. This is it. That bit swings under, this bit comes out. You know, there's a lot of things moving there, a lot of tolerances, a lot of sort of mechanism that makes this work. That's all working. You know, all we've really got to do is make this good and it's, uh, you know, that's another bit together. Okay, and so the night time has passed, the foam has dried, and already I've glued some fiberglass mat over that. And what I've done here, this drops back further than it should, so I can get my swoop in, and it goes and out. But what this is gonna do is just get this back onto there, so we can actuate this whole thing a few times, find out where it's gonna catch, and get the gap down, the panel gap up to that as tight as possible. I want this to seem seamless like magic, that you don't walk up and think, oh, that, that button bit must open, the big gap round it. Well, no, it's not gonna be like that, it's gonna be a lot tighter. So we're just trying to get things solid, so we've got nice, straight, accurate datum points to work from. Also, <clears throat> I've gone over all of the gaps that I cut yesterday, um, just with one single layer of fiberglass. And what this will do is, once that's dry, I'll cut a new panel gap into that. And the panel gap um, will be a lot, obviously a lot smaller and a lot nicer. And now I've seen it actuate and I know what parts sort of pull away and what parts, you know, drag and then move. I think we're safe on all this to start tightening that already. And that's it at the minute. What I've got to do, I've just got to get some resin on there, get this dry, and then we can move on to the next stage. What we're looking at here is, um, is this, we've got to get this more rigid. And it is a bit hollow on the back, but I want it rigid before I even move it. Like I say, I need this to be still, so I can make this bit fit it as this bit wobbles. Not a lot I can do. So, my plan is, I'm going to fit this piece of aluminium, for American viewers, that's aluminum. Aluminum. So I'm gonna set this um, piece of aluminum on here. I'm gonna screw it in and then glass up to that. And hopefully that will give this, you know, the extra bit of rigidity it needs. Um, because I've glassed it there and it's, yeah, this is, this is just too floppy. So I'm gonna screw that on, glass it in, and hopefully this will be a little bit stiffer. So once we've done that, we'll be able to swing this in and then we'll be able to deal with all the problems we're gonna have in here with things being a little bit sort of wobbly and saggy. That's probably gonna end up with a bit more fabrication around the pivot, make that a bit stronger. As I always say, if you're building a car and it's the first car you've ever built, just leave the doors it's got. Doors are really difficult. Sort of by accident, I've ended up, this is a door, isn't it? It's a door. I've ended up putting a door on the back of the car, an extra door if you will. So um, yeah, this is always going to be difficult, they're always a bit wobbly, it's, it's hard to get them, you know, really stiff, but we will get there. You've just got to keep bracing and adding things in, and there's no real way of knowing what you've got to do before you start, because I've got movement down in the, down in the pivot, which is somewhere in here. You know, that thing is welded to the chassis, so you know, you never underestimate how strong this sort of thing's gotta be.
we've got, we've done the same reinforcement here with a piece of aluminium on this side as well. And basically, we don't really need the reinforcement, but that piece of aluminium bent to that shape really nice. So I bent it to that, flipped it round, and bonded it on here. And now they're the same both sides. So that's all glassed in. Also what I've done, I've gone over this fiberglass again. I went over it and I cut the panel gap in it and I'm gonna be doing that again. Um, I've just gone over it again because my line wasn't very good, but also it doesn't matter. Built up the edge, nice. And I'll probably cut this and keep going over it a few times. You can't just build this up four times and then recut it because you won't see where your line's meant to be. The fiberglass will end up being so thick you won't see where your first cut was, but if you do it one at a time, you can build up a nice thick edge to your panel without losing where it is. So that's done. And also, this bit, it's still got some flexibility to it, but what I think I'll be able to do is pick this up on a carrier mounted inside that holds that, so it actually latches back when it's done. But I'll be doing that once we're underneath the car and the car's on the ramp. I'm not gonna attempt it now doesn't matter for the time being, it's stiff enough that I can get a panel gap and then even when I fit the latch I can more adjust that to get it even tighter. But yeah, it's looking good. So, my next bit, I'm going to cut this all open again, I'm going to see how it all works. Oh yeah, I forgot as well, down here as well, the reason I glass down here is that this is the other panel gap for the, um, for the whole thing opening. So this will have one line in there. And that's got to be a good panel gap because that is going to be like a, a split in the bumper itself. I'm going to have to make that super nice. So cut those open and ever more we're getting closer and closer to the, the finesse that um, will make this all look good. getting there it's really getting there um, I've started to tighten up some of the uh, the panel gaps and we can see that here and what I always do I skim the filler over the whole lot get rid of the gap then with the edge of the filler spread up just skim down it and it gives you the gap again and you know what you just keep doing that until you can get a piece of sandpaper in there doubled over and you'll always get quite a nice panel gap see we have this gap here, for this to swing underneath, which it does, this goes right under there, we need a gap about like that. Rather than try and get this gap really tight, like, don't get me wrong, it's gonna be all right, but I'm gonna put a flare and snow plow at the bottom of this panel so it comes down and sticks out, and that sits just above this, probably like a finger's depth. So as it comes out there, um, you'll just see it as one piece. Um, and it will look like the bumper is sort of inset into a recess. But of course we know that it swings under. And that recess I'll take up to both sides and I'll do it on both sides, so both sides are the same. And hopefully, well not hopefully, I don't, I don't really care, but you know, if people did come up and thought, oh my God, you know, they, they didn't clock that this moved, that would be the best thing. And I do think, I think if you didn't know, you wouldn't know. But yeah, it's got to have that element of surprise. The back opens and then it drops the bike down. You press one button and poof, drive away. You come back, just drive up to the trailer, whoosh, back on. The car re sort of reconfigures itself and off you go. Oh, that's how it is in my mind anyway. Laters! shop is an absolute mess I've got a big curtain up that stops the dust going everywhere but from here we can see just how weird this thing looks so weird when it's out and that piece of bumper that like tucks under oh my god it's just mind-blowing weirdness on a car that was already pretty weird this thing just looks like it flies behind the car but 
I'm super pleased with that. Weird's a way to go, and big mess, big success. And my apologies once again about the state of my workshop. So, that is it for another week. Um, we've done a lot of sanding, a lot of messing about with Bondo and stuff, but things are getting there, and this is how things are. You know, you've got to, you just got to keep going, keep sanding, keep putting that fur on, and one, you know, one day you'll have that dream car. I know this episode isn't like three days long, but I was three solid like eight hour days doing that. So it, it doesn't just come together. You've got to keep on. Anyway, that's it for this week. Don't forget, give us a big thumbs up, comments down below, bell end icon, and share the video with anyone else that you'd want to inflict this on. I thank you very much and good night.